How to Ileac Diseases, Part 2. Angioplasty and stenting has enough evidence to tell that it is the treatment of choice for Category 1 and Category 2 lesions and also is comparable to surgery for Category 3 lesions. Category 1 lesions are lesions that are less than 3 cm. Category 2 lesions are again lesions which can be less than 3 when they are calcified or eccentric or a 3 to 5 cm lesion and category 3 lesions are longer lesions which are basically stenosis of 5 to 10 cm or an occlusion of 5 cm. Category 4 lesions are lesions not ideally suitable for endovascular therapy. There are stenosis greater than 10 cm, chronic occlusions greater than 5 cm, extensive bilateral autoiliac disease and stenosis in a patient either with an abdominal aneurysm or another cause that requires surgery. So again a diagrammatic form of representing this. So we got a category 1 lesion which is a focal concentric stenosis, a non-calcific stenosis which is less than 3 centimeters. Now these are good lesions, easy lesions with phenomenal long-term results for angioplasty and stenting. The category 2 would be an eccentric stenosis of less than 3 centimeters, a calcific stenosis of less than 3 centimeters, or a concentric stenosis between 3 to 5 centimeters. Category 3 would be an occlusion of less than 5 centimeters, or a stenosis of 5 to 10 centimeters. Now the other categories, that is occlusions which are touching 10 centimeters or extensive autoiliac lesions, are not candidates ideally suitable for endovascular therapy. A category 1 lesion is ideally treated by plain balloon angioplasty. Stenting is usually performed only if the results of plain balloon angioplasty is not acceptable. So how would we treat a classical category 1 lesion? You'll take a catheter ideally from the opposite side and do the angiogram to confirm it. Through the same catheter, you can navigate a wire across the stenosis and then take a crossover sheet or a guiding catheter to allow us to take test injections and also to allow us to have extra support. Then you take a balloon across it, dilate it, deflate it and then if your test injections are showing good results you pull out the wire. For example here is a classical category 1 lesion, a focal concentric stenosis, non-calcific which is uh, located in the common iliac artery. This shows the technique that we described, the wire is across you can see the tip of the, ga the crossover sheet and an inflated balloon. This is the result after plain balloon angioplasty which is good. You can do the same procedure for the ipsilateral route where you take a wire across the stenosis, take a balloon, inflate and come off. A patient can also have bilateral concentric focal stenosis and again you could do the same technique of either going from one side crossing over and dilating one as an antigrade and the other as a retrograde or you could take two wires from both sides and get a result which is acceptable. For example, here is a patient where we have bilateral iliac stenosis, multiple focal stenosis of the common and external iliac arteries and we can use a retro anterior or a retro retro and the result is like this where you have good results because the lesions are non-calcific and the lesions are concentric and focal. Now when would you go ahead and do primary stenting in an iliac lesion? One if there is occlusion, the long term results with stenting is better than plain balloon angioplasty if you have eccentric stenosis because the lesions will not adequately dilate because the normal vessel stretches when you use a balloon 
In severely calcific stenosis, it's dangerous to do a direct uh, a balloon dilatation because vascular rupture is more common. And in long segment complex stenosis, again, we know the results are not good and thus we would advocate primary stenting. For example, here is a patient with a stenosis which is more than 3 centimeters. Let's presume it's got calcium and obviously it is not a clean concentric stenosis. You have your angiographic catheter across the bifurcation. The angiogram has been performed. Then under road map, you take an angled thermo wire across the lesion. Once the wire is across, you take your diagnostic catheter across, exchange it for an extra strip wire and place a crossover sheet or a guiding catheter. Then you place your stent across the lesion. Most often I use a self-expanding stent and gradually under controlled condition deploy the stent so that it covers a normal segment to normal segment. Following which, you would do another balloon angioplasty to ensure that the stent is open adequately and you can come off. So here is an example of a calcific stenosis, more than 3 centimeters, located in the left common iliac artery. This shows the wire and a guiding catheter across. The next slide shows the stent across the lesion. And this is the end result after post dilatation. So that is a safe way to treat a complex lesion. This is a category 3 lesion and we know that these are risky vessels. You might end up having a rupture or a distal emboli and thus it's important to follow these guidelines to ensure you have good results. If it's an eccentric stenosis this way, you know it will not stay open with plain balloon angioplasty and it's always sensible to dilate the lesion and stent it or just use a balloon expandable stent if you think the device will go across the lesion without pre-dilatation. Here again is a lesion which you can see will fall into a category 3. It's actually diffuse disease on both sides but they are stenotic and you can see the result after bilateral stenting. Now when the focal stenosis in the, is in the ostea, the strategy changes again. You would take wires from both sides to perform the kissing balloon technique. So you have balloons across both sides, you dilate and you get a result like this. Now why is it important that we have to use balloon from both sides? This is to prevent what is called a snow plowing of a plaque onto the normal side. So once you have a balloon on both sides, that does not happen. So one must remember to use a balloon on both sides when we treat osteal lesions. For example, here is a patient with an osteal stenosis treated by bilateral kissing balloon technique with good results. But osteal lesions often would require stents as we will show you soon. Now if it is bilateral osteal lesions, the technique doesn't change in any way. You would use two balloons and come back with results which are adequate and if not adequate, you will require a stent. So when the results are suboptimal, stents are indicated and the choice would be a balloon expandable stent for discrete osteal stenosis. So you would ideally place a stent in such a way that it just comes into the outer. Here is a patient with a focal stenosis. You have a wire across from both sides. You take a balloon and then take a balloon mounted stent and you would leave a stent across the ostium. So here is an example of a patient with a focal stenosis of the right common iliac origin and this is the result after we used a balloon expandable stent uh, and uh, the results as you see are extremely good.